In the midst of this global crisis, the voices for justice are revealing what really matters. It is time for Planetary Makeover. Here we feature solutions and modern miracles in documentary videos that offer hope for our future and remind us all of our spiritual source. Long ago it was forecast that at this time in history, extraordinary teachers, including the world teacher, would emerge to help us as we build a world that works for everyone. Now, here's your host of Planetary Makeover, Mr. David Minot. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Planetary Makeover. We're back yet again with another enlightening and entertaining episode. And this time, of course, as you know, it's the Miracles Behind the Miracles, which is a interview, sort of co-interview, between Dick Larson and Buddy Piper. And this dates back to the early 2000s, so keep that in mind when you hear some of the events that they mention. And our take on it was, of course, as you know, called It's Going to Take a Miracle, and we got them. And we certainly do. The world is full of them. And Dick and Buddy are going to describe many of those. So I'll give you a little introduction before they get started. And of course, first off, we want to remind you that at Planetary Makeover, we are not here to convince you of anything. We're presenting all this information for your consideration only. Uh, the convincing will be on your part, or not, if this doesn't have the ring of truth to you. But if it does, then look into it further for yourself. But this information is designed to stimulate the mind and the intuition. So the answers will come to you more from the inside out than from any of us. And we also want you to consider, as always, that we can remake our troubled world and go from a planet full of chaos into one of peace, harmony, justice, equality, and the human rights of all being honored and protected as a matter of course. And that day is coming, trust us. And the second thing we always want to point out is that in this quest, we have help of an extraordinary kind. Because what I just mentioned might seem to some to be nearly impossible, but it's not. Anything is possible if man applies his will and if it is needed. And all of the things I mentioned are certainly needed on the planet. And mankind has the will. He simply has to apply it. And that great help assistance that I made reference to are humanity's elder brothers, the masters of wisdom, as they're called. Also the Brotherhood of Compassion and many other names. When humanity takes one step towards them, they take 10 steps towards us. So that's all that we're proposing at this time. We take a few steps towards the masters. Now, this phenomena has been predicted for thousands of years, most commonly through the world's major religions. And if you take a look at them, you see, for instance, uh, the Jews await the Messiah, the Muslims await the Iman Mahdi, the Christians await the Christ, the Hindus await uh, the Kalki avatar, and lastly, the Buddhists await the Maitreya Buddha. They actually got the name right for his name, the world teacher for this age, his name is Maitreya. But he's not a religious figure per se, nor are the masters. They're teachers in the broadest sense, spiritual teachers. And spirituality is not the sole purview of religion, as we have been so often told over the millennia. It's one of the greatest lies ever foisted upon humanity. Any act which contributes to the advancement of the race, the human race, 
is spiritual. You could have spiritual accounting, spiritual janitorial work, spiritual art. All of these things can be spiritual as long as they assist the evolution of mankind, not just in the religious realms. And of course, it that actually goes on in the philosophical realms as well and can be every aspect of life and of our lives. So, since this world teacher is here, what does that mean? It means this is a new age, the age of Aquarius. It's not the end of the world, it's the end of an age and, and good riddance to it. The age that we just came out of, it benefited humanities in a lot of ways, but its energy is waning and its influence has rightly landed upon humanity and helped transform us, but now it's time to move on. The energy of, energies of Aquarius include that of synthesis, brotherhood, love, equality, justice, ecological restoration, everything that humanity wants, everything anyone could ever want, and that is on its way. In fact, it's already begun, despite all present signs. To the contrary, and some of the signs that are heralding this new age and the emergence of the world teacher Maitreya and the masters of wisdom are these miracles that Dick Larson and Buddy Piper are going to talk to us about in detail. These are happening, as we know, across the planet and daily all around us. And these are hints from the aforementioned Masters of Wisdom and Maitreya that a great change is occurring, that something's afoot, and that a being of enormous stature, namely Maitreya, is out in the world and actually has been for some time now. Um, our information is 1977. Since then, working with leaders in all fields behind the scenes of everyday life. And for us, that means a lot of wonderful changes, and some of those we will outline. The approach of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom, excuse me, is one of humbleness and simplicity. While they are highly advanced spiritually, they would tell you that there is no difference between you and them. The only difference we could see is that they're fully self-actualized spiritually and energetically, which technically anyone could do at any time. And Maitreya, in addition to that, is really an avatar of a sort who's wielding tremendous powers that have never been handled and expressed and released in the plan on the planet quite like this in our entire history. And he in, he in turn is overshadowed by entities that are even more advanced than him. One is the avatar of peace and equilibrium and one of synthesis and a third one who is wielding and expressing a form of energy which we don't even have a name for yet. So when we talk about the avatar of peace and equilibrium, um, that avatar is helping with his energies or its energies going through Maitreya, balance the energies of discord and of war and of conflict throughout the planet and balancing them out into an equal proportion of peace. And on the synthesis aspect, we think of things such as socialism and capitalism and bringing the two together, democratic socialism, social democracy. So instead of having them at opposite ends, we have them coming together as one and forming something new. And also what we should note, what I should note in telling you about this, is that Maitreya and the Masters love everyone unconditionally, including those that don't love them or understand them or don't believe in them. We would say belief is irrelevant. Belief is of the mind. The mind can choose to believe anything it wishes. And the Masters are not looking for followers or believers. They don't want you to believe in them. They want you to experience them. And you can do that 
to the expression of your own soul energy and what Maitreya is bringing to the planet, what he's teaching, which is honesty of mind, sincerity of spirit, and detachment. When we practice these three, we are expressing ourselves at a soul level. Honesty of mind, oftentimes we think one thing, say another, and do yet a third. It's not congruent. Sincerity of spirit, too often we mimic others or who we think we should be. We are not our true, authentic selves. And that's the gift you have to give to the world. So we need you, all of you, yours truly included, to express our authentic, real selves and present that to the world. And what did I say for the last one? Detachment, yes, detachment. That helps us cope with what's going on in the world. You know how doctors cope with emergencies? If they fell apart every time someone got sick, they wouldn't be able to function. So we, in turn, will love the world and love ourselves and be able to handle the crises that come our way and those of our brethren by viewing it dispassionately and yet showing compassion. Detachment doesn't mean that you don't care. In fact, it makes you even more effective and more loving. Now to get back to the love of the masters and the miracles. They love everyone, as I said, unconditionally, everyone from those who are aware of their presence and have studied their history, like yours truly, to the fundamentalists of every ilk, as well as atheists and agnostics who would think this is all hogwash, which is perfectly okay. You know why? Because right now, what I'm presenting to you is, to many of you, is just hypothetical, theoretical. What you need is proof. Now, we contend that they're out in the world already, as we said, and eventually they will be fully emerging publicly. There'll be a day of declaration in which all eyes will see Maitreya. He'll be on worldwide television. And even if you don't have a TV, you'll hear his thoughts in the quiet, the solitude, the peace, and the privacy of your own mind. So that day is coming. So if you're going to be doubtful now, by all means, do it now. Disbelieve, be doubtful, dismissive, cynical, whatever you want. Do it now while you still have the chance. Be, knock yourselves out, indulge yourselves. Because the day is coming. When this information I'm presenting will pass all gainsaying, to use an antiquated term, even the most abject mind will not be able to deny it at that time. So indulge yourselves in, in doubt now. That's perfectly fine. So I think we should get on to the, to the video itself so you can hear what Dick and buddy have to say because i think you've heard enough from me so with that we're going to let the video roll enjoy and we'll talk afterwards Hi, I'm Buddy Piper, and I want you to know how delighted my good friend Dick Larson and I are to be here with you once again as we try to give you insights into a better world. If you remember the last time we saw you, uh, I have been pursuing this uh, as a focal point, uh, calling uh, searching out the miracles in the world, the uh, modern miracles since 1945, and uh, we uh, talked about a lot of them, and uh, Dick and I have both studied de in great depth the miracles behind the miracles, and today we'll try to reveal more of that to you. How are you, Dick? Doing fine, buddy. It's good to see you. Good to see you, and uh, it's nice to have the 
those people with us out there. One of the things we talked about last time, buddy, was the crosses of light that you have been traveling around the United States to, to find. Yes, and, uh, and of course, uh, people may remember some of that. It started in Los Angeles, California, and then it swung clear around the world, and this was predicted that this would happen. Uh, we we uh, both ran into the same uh, magazine. I, I brought one with me because uh, I love this magazine, Share International. But uh, it uh, swung around the world, the, uh, the uh, cro manifestations of the crosses of light that uh, some great, great teachers said would be putting this information out to... Bring us to the awareness something great's happening, good for mankind. And these crosses appeared in people's homes, in the windows of people's homes. Yes. And they weren't <laughs> the traditional T cross, uh, the Christian cross. They were an even armed cross. Right. They send out some tremendously warm, loving, healing energy that you can't look at one of these and not have some kind of a change spiritually, emotionally, and many people physically. At work, they have this mobile bill, and they do cancer screens. And they found that I had a, a, a lump. So I went to the surgeon. He says he wanted to have an um, ultrasound on my breast. So we went and had an ultrasound. And when the report went to the doctor, it was nothing there. So all this time, this happened before the cross. And after the cross, my lump disappeared. When we pray and people get healed, it's because we ask Jesus to create a new organ again. That happened to me. <laughs> he gave me a new womb, <laughs> a perfect one. And uh, this, is, this is the proof. We have this beautiful baby. And uh, it's the same thing with, with other people that have come with problems. Most of the people that have come to see the cross, they come with a need, uh, usually a physical healing that they ask God for through prayer and um, through this cross. I truly believe that it is through this cross too because uh, when we pray the light of the cross gets brighter. I get excited because I'm yeah. so full of joy inside. Yeah. I want to share it with all the whole you world. Are, Another one of the miracles that we talked about, buddy, were the, was the the milk drinking Hindu statue miracle that swept the world in I think four days yes uh, were these these small Hindu statues all around the world it had been predicted foretold centuries ago that at some point they would drink milk right and they did people held spoons of milk up to these statues and they were and the milk disappeared they were brass they were uh, they were stone right. marble brass and yet the milk disappeared when you held the spoon up maybe maybe uh, most of the people listening uh, saw that on hard copy and some of the other uh, things that uh, flashed around the world when this happened I even held a spoon up to one in I know a you place did. called Chatsworth California and that milk disappeared <laughs> and that was a that was an indication to the Hindus around the world that a great soul had descended. It was told that when this happened, a great soul had descended. And it also was a great uplifting force to the poor of the people who are followers of, of the Hindu uh, approach uh, because it's, it's the statue of uh, prosperity that, that it called attention to, which means that there's hope for the poor in the future to all the Hindus. And of course, that has to be for everybody for the world to be great. That's right. And another one was the healing waters yeah. miracles. Oh, I love that one, of course. And that started in Mexico. Well, the first one, uh, it, was, it was told in 1988 in this magazine share, share that I ran across, and you did too, evidently, and uh, that uh, there would be uh, wells appearing around the world, uh, endless sources of water, uh, which would c offer something very important. We we're kind of... Uh, uh, blase here in the United States. We think everybody has health care. The truth is most of the world has no health care. And so this, uh, the benevolent beings that surround our planet said it's time to get this into the hands of people who let it go free mm -hmm. and let people drink that and uh, experience the healings which we have we know if you get on your plane right after this uh, uh, discussion we're having and go down to a place called Tlacote, T-L-A-C-O-T-E, Mexico, 250 miles northeast of uh, Mexico City, you would see people st land, uh, standing there by the thousands with uh, uh, $30 million worth of beautiful tanks holding the water so that you're not going to be disappointed when you get there. And uh, most people get help from that water. Not only in Mexico, but there are healing wells oh, yes. in... Uh, Germany in Nordenau, Germany. Right. And then there's another one in India. Is it Nadana, New Delhi? Nadana, north of New Delhi. Near New Delhi. Okay. Yeah, right. And one in 
Oh, yeah, the one that you're... Russia, well, right? One in Russia. He gives voice to me because uh, one of the things I've done in my lifetime, uh, among many other things, is I've had a deep joy working with uh, the wonderful people caught in the drunk driving program. And so right. I, uh, I've always uh, loved these extra sensitive people, and uh, I'm sure they smile, too, if they hear me talking now. There are 10,000 people around L.A. itself that I used to talk to. But uh, this water that comes up in northern India cures... Russia, alcoholism Russia. And, and excessive drinking. Northern Russia. Oh, what did I say? India. Oh, That's well, not now. I'm mistaken. <laughs> anyway, it cures alcoholism. Yes, cures alcoholism. TASS News Agency put that out. If you want to research that, get a hold of TASS. Okay. <laughs> and the other one, the other one, the uh, big one that we talked about are all of the Madonna manifestations occurring all across the world. Statues that cry, statues that cry real tears, cry blood. Yes. Um, statues that move. Right. Uh, paintings that weep. Uh, and then in Clearwater, Florida, on that, what, big office building. Well, it's, a, it's an all-glass office building down right. there. If you saw this on television, you must have been overwhelmed with the beauty of that, uh, about a 60 feet high. It was like it was in Technicolor. Yeah, of the Madonna. And you could almost see the baby there. She was leaning over so carefully. Uh, and uh, this tr attracted millions of people. And you know the story about what happened after that, about the uh, vandals. Oh, right. They yeah. threw paint or something on the, on the side of the building. Right. Somebody got to it uh, uh, within uh, six months or so after it came up there. The first people who had doubts said, well, it's just an oil stain anyway. But the millions of people who came there said, it doesn't look like an oil stain to me. It's a beautiful picture of the Madonna. But the vandals got to it. And the fascinating thing about that, try to wipe off paint or whatever was on there uh, on an ordinary graffiti around your house and see what happens, see if it comes off easily. A couple of rainstorms came in that Madonna healed herself. Is now just shining as Washed brightly right as ever. Well, it, the, what, something happened again. And you and I have been studying yes. uh, several sources of, of, of material uh, to, to discover the, the miracle behind the miracle. Right. And, and what we've concluded and what we want to tell people about um, is that these miracles are not a coincidence. No. That they're all connected. Yes. And that they are, in fact, signs uh, that that help is here, right? and what's behind them are the great, great uh, spiritual teachers who have, who have come with their, with their leader, the world teacher, and are here now. Yes, you know, it's, uh, what uh, surprised me when I started really getting into this, I've been searching since I was six years old for some answer to the problem of uh, uh, 35,000 children dying a day of hunger in a world that has a 10% surplus of food. And I was led into this information and you came in from another avenue, but we both were led into the information, and we discovered that we really are beautifully watched over. If you read Time magazine, it says 60-some percent or 70-some percent of the people believe they've, been, they've seen angels, and right. uh, you can't uh, mention that on the air when I'm, I'm talking a lot of uh, radio broadcasts and television broadcasts, and you do too, and you just can't uh, believe the response from people who have seen these uh, highly developed beings. And we need to be watched over because these are difficult times for everyone. Yes. And w there have been a lot of scientific advances, but there are many serious problems that remain, and we need guidance and leadership to find solutions to these problems. And that's what these, these great spiritual beings, these teachers, are here to help us. They're here when, when they come forward, and they'll come forward when it's the right time, soon. Soon. And, and they will be giving us, along with the world teacher, will be giving us... Uh, some solutions to some of these problems. Some of these problems look like they won't go away. Miracles that we didn't talk about were right. government miracles or political miracles, if you want to put it that way. Um, problems like the Cold War. Yes. Looked like it wasn't going to go away at all, and it would be here forever. Um, Share International had predictions by, by the world teacher, um, and one of them was that a man would come out of the Soviet Union, come to the West, and say, I want to offer peace, and I want to end the Cold War. And sure enough, Gorbachev did that. Well, that he happened. approached Ronald Reagan. And uh, not only did the Cold War end, just like that, but, but Glasnost brought uh, the breakup of the Soviet Union. We now have separate republics. That's a miracle. That's a miracle to me, because I watched that for so long, so anxious. And all the young people grown up from the time of the last uh, 20 or 30 years, uh, and they knew at one push of that button, it could all be over. And then it stopped. And isn't it magnificent? And Some it of just goes to show what happens when we get a solution right. to these problems. Another one was South Africa. Oh, yes. Apartheid. Mm. One of the greatest uh, prejudicial problems in the world was in South Africa, as you know, buddy, yes. with apartheid and, and 
Uh, de Klerk says that God told him to end apartheid. Right. We happen to have come across information that uh, a messenger of God, one of these teachers we're talking about, right. this uh, leader of this group of teachers who are now with us, uh, did talk to him. He interpreted it as God. In the meantime, he also appeared, this, this, this great teacher. He has a personal name, Maitreya, uh, happy one, one who brings joy to the world. He appeared to uh, Mandela and, and told Mandela, well, send a letter to the clerk here and uh, tell him, uh, I'd like to talk with you. And uh, Mandela said, oh, he won't talk to me. I can't even talk to the governor of the prison. And the teacher says, I know that, but send it to him. Meantime, uh, this teacher uh, did appear and talk to uh, de Klerk, just as you said, and, and de Klerk uh, interpreted that as God had talked to him, and it certainly was an, act, right. an actual and perfect representative of God. And a huge problem, once the solution was presented, once again, just disappeared. Right. Same thing with the Berlin Wall. Well, now that one, you know, I got a kick out of that because I had, uh, in my 50s, I got a uh, midlife crisis. You went over there. <laughs> yeah. I, I wandered all over Europe hitchhiking, and I got in behind the Iron Curtain because I was so curious right. about how a, a great nation like that could be divided. One freedom-loving and joyful, and the other just across the line. Uh, I got inside there, and they would let you go in at that time just as long as you got some money because mm -hmm. they needed it, and then they let you get right out of there when it's gone. And uh, But it was so somber and uh, hopeless and depressed there. I didn't believe the prediction that said, very soon the wall will come down, or at least that's what I interpreted the prediction to mean, and uh, that, uh, that uh, the two Germanys would be reunited. I couldn't imagine that, but it happened. It did. The good guys versus the bad guys. All these years, East Germany, West Germany, right. East Berlin, West right. Berlin, and all of a sudden they're taking down the wall. Right. That's a miracle. And they're still functioning very well with a combination of the best traits of both sides and you know, also utilizing some of the best traits of the democratic life as well as the, their life. And these miracles are here as signs yes. that these great teachers are here and about to come forward and that we need to be alert. It's, they're our wake-up call yes. is what they are and that we need to be alert because we are going to be offered solutions and to some of today's problems, some of the, some of the terrible problems that we have today. You mentioned one already, alcohol and drug abuse yes. is rampant uh, throughout the world. Crime, uh, no education or terrible education. You know that uh, education thing, I'm gonna, I have to cats, cats go past that one uh, right now. I know you're trying to move to that fourth one so we get them all out here, but that education thing is phenomenal because uh, well, we've had an example of that, uh, somebody who's aware of this problem uh, recently. Of course, we all mourned the idea that uh, in, a, in the height of her life, 36 years old, Princess Di died, and she had been very strongly saying, let's stop the, the, uh, the arms that we're creating, and let's stop what we can. And she knew the fact that, that the amount of money we spend in the world, all the nations preparing for a war, that 1% of that money would educate every child in the world. So we take 1% of what we put into arms every year, and every child in the world would have a great education. That leaves 99% for those who are frightened and want to have bombs and war. Not 10%, 1%. 1%. There's got to be a way. There is a way. We just have we can to do that put our minds our, to if it. If we set our minds to it, that's yes. right. And we need to be inspired, and that's what these teachers are here to do, uh, is to inspire us to find some of these solutions. Uh, another one. Um, that, well, one of the things we were going to do is we were going to let people know where, well, where we get this information. By. Yes, people but ask us. Before we do, I want to suggest, if I may, Dick, that if any of you are near a pen or a pencil, oh, right. uh, please get it handy because at the end of this discussion, we will give you several sources. If you've got a computer, you can get a lot of information. If you want to call a, uh, some uh, uh, free toll number, you can get, we'll give you, put you on a mailing list. We'll keep you informed on all the miracles that are happening, everything marvelous about these teachers that are happening that we can discover. And, uh, and, and believe me, if you'll give yourself the opportunity, you will get turned on like we are. We're not trying to sell you anything. We're just trying to give you an idea that there's hope out there. So stay tuned because at the end of this program, we'll give that information on, on how, you can, how you can get the free newsletter and find out about where to find these other sources of information, one of which is Share International, which we had talked about, right. which is a, a magazine aimed at world leaders. As right. a matter of fact, it's in the Library of the United Nations. Right, and it's also aimed at the leaders of the press. The press represent us, the people, you know. And uh, it's also now being, uh, other people are getting it too. but. Uh, you will find that an amazing magazine because this gets the information out. Uh, we both were astounded when we saw it from these great teachers we're talking about. It's in there. Right, and that's where the predictions were from the world teacher. Right. 
which have almost all come true. A couple, couple of three more that happened. We'll get yeah. to those, won't we? <laughs> okay. Another source of wonderful source of information are the 20 or so books written by Alice A. Bailey in the 1930s and 1940s. Uh, many people refer to that as the Ageless Wisdom Teachings. Yes. Um, and you and I have both studied those extensively. And uh, aside from H.P. Blavatsky's writing, probably the other biggest source is that of Benjamin Krem, a contemporary who has now written four wonderful books, yes. uh, which you and I know all about. He carries this message that we try to give out around the world. He's been doing it for 20 years now. And uh, he's, uh, if you ever get a chance to see him or hear him, uh, take it, because you're going to see one of the most highly developed men on the planet. Uh, so those are the four sources of information that have helped us uh, give out this information and that you'll be referred to. Oh, incidentally, I want to mention this. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it down right as you start writing it, because we're going to mention it three or four times at the, uh, in this, at the end of this discussion, so you can really get the information down. These miracles are happening now because, as we said, we need solutions to these problems. And one of the, one of the problems that you just touched on was starvation, the famines across the world, and the starvation as we speak, every two and a half seconds, someone dies on this planet of malnutrition-related causes. Yes, and we know we have a 10% surplus of food in the world right now, and we could grow a hundred times the food easily if we weren't using food as a lever against people. And another reason that these signs are here and these teachers are here now is because it's the millennium. Yes. And we hear a lot of gloom and doom predictions that's in the magazines, it's in, there are being books written, uh, movies, television shows, about the terrible things that are going to happen because it's a new millennium. And what Buddy and I want you to know is that it's not true. It's simply not true. The new millennium brings hope. Right. That's yeah. what these miracles are a sign of. Right. I wanted to, I'm always interrupting you because I get excited about what you say. That's all right. Uh, Dick. Uh, <laughs> millennium to a lot of people means the end of the earth. And the truth is it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the end of an age. Is that right, correct? that's the right, the end of an era. Yeah, yeah. And and we're going to see along with it solutions to end some of the problems we've been talking about, starvation uh, and and so on, crime. And what's going what's going to come in instead of the crop the competition is cooperation. I almost said it first. Oh, that's all right. Is cooperation will replace this tremendous competition that's putting a tremendous stress and strain on everyone. There's nobody listening to us at this moment who isn't heavily stressed. I don't care how uh, f safe you feel economically. And most of the people now know that you're not going to have one job for life any longer. You're going to have 10 or 12 jobs if you can get them as you go through life. And this, of course, reflects on the young people, which causes them to be panicked. And this is the cause of a lot of the drug problems. Uh, I've heard uh, one of the writers, Benjamin Krem, say that's called spiritual starvation when there's no hope. And yes. so you do something momentarily, take drugs of some sort to momentarily feel okay. And that spreads around the world and is getting worse. But it's just the end of the breakdown of the old, making way for the new. And that's why we talk about uh, insights for a better world coming. That's right. And, and it's as bad as it's going to get. Yes. This is it. Yes. This is as bad as it gets. As a matter of fact, it's already starting to get better if you listen very carefully. Just and, listen and very one of the carefully. Things that, and pay attention to what's happening in the world and these miracles that we're talking about. One of the things... Um, that we're going to discover is that when we set our minds to it with the proper leadership and inspiration that we can put an end to separation and we can work together to solve these problems. Well, uh, obviously we came through an age that's ending that was uh, teach us to be, uh, teach us, taught us to be. I mean, my English teacher out in Kansas where I grew up said, oh my gosh, I taught you to say teach, you're taught. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, know at the, we'll know that uh, the end of competition as we know it is ending and this cooperation. We saw another manifestation on that at the, uh, uh, which I got a big kick out of, uh, uh, great, great joy out of seeing the uh, uh, co cooperation of the masses at the funeral of Princess Di, mm -hmm. bringing the monarchy to attention and, let's, and saying, hey, don't you ignore the pain in the world because the person whose funeral is being taking place right now and then shortly thereafter, of course, you remember Mother Teresa, same person, uh, same kind of action she took. Uh, is uh, what we want you to understand, and the Queen bowed. That funeral was a wonderful demonstration of the power of love. All those millions of people, elbow to elbow, there was, there was no problem. Uh, and and no, it was, stop, no stopping them bringing those flowers. I love those flowers. Yes, five feet high. Yeah, five, five, five feet high. And it just goes to show what we can do when we, when we cooperate 
the energy that we create is magical. It truly is magical. Yes, one of the things about the future that we will get into, if we don't do it all in this discussion, we have another one coming up later, we'll answer all the questions you want to send in. So anytime you call for anything, you write a question in there, we'll look at it and we'll try to answer it. Uh, Stay tuned at the end of this show for right. that opportunity right. because we'll give you lots of information on how to get the free newsletter and how to obtain where you can find this information that Buddy and I are, are presenting to you. Right. Uh, well, I had something I was going there, but I can't quite well, remember what it was. Well, one of the things that people ask is they ask, what's going to make people share? What's going to make That's people right. cooperate? That's and we, we've already mentioned the predictions, so many of them that have come true by the world teacher in, that have been published in Share International over the years. And there are a couple that haven't happened yet, buddy, and I think we should talk about those because they're going to make the difference. Yes. The, level, the playing field has to be leveled between those who have everything and those who have nothing because that's what competition has brought about in the world. Uh, maybe we didn't intend for it to be that way, but that's the way it is. If you just look at the G7 nations, of which we are one, we take 75% of the world's food supply, leaving 25% for two-thirds or more of the world. That's competition. We must cooperate, and that will uh, help us share in the world, and we will do that, but we have to be reminded how to do that and we are setting into motion something now that the great teachers didn't want us to set into motion but they're coming out because we're about ready to to harm ourselves if they don't give us the right directions to go and that's why they're here at this time well the greed that has taken over the world is going to cause they have said a stock market collapse not a crash no. not a fall but a worldwide stock market collapse and this is not anything to be worried about in particular, it's not going to be a disaster because these teachers are prepared to help us through it. Matter but of what fact, what it is yeah. going to create is it's going to create a lessening of that tremendous gap between the rich and the poor, and it's going to level the playing field, just like you said. Yeah. And we'll have to come up with a new priority besides money, and maybe it'll be caring for each other. And maybe it'll be sharing. Yes, that's right. You know, uh, th that's right, Dick. Exactly. Uh, the uh, the forces of bringing us all to a p level playing field will also remind us of the environment. You know, it isn't just the poor who won't have food in the future if we don't get busy on the cleaning up the water and the air and stopping cutting the for rainforests that keep give us oxygen. We, well, nobody, I don't care how wealthy you are, will be able to buy food because there won't be food on this planet unless we get to that, and that will happen very soon. And the, the other prediction that we were going to tell people about that will make a difference is this world teacher who is the leader of these 14, the 13 other teachers who are here now, uh, and will be coming forth soon. They're stationed we'll in different uh, major cities around the world right now. That's right. And when he comes forward, it will be on worldwide satellite television, which is there for this purpose. It's nice to have World Cup soccer, but this is why it's there. Yeah, the and this is even more important than the Raiders you know. game. <laughs> <laughs> and when the world teacher comes on worldwide television, all eyes will see him, and he will, one of the things that will happen at that time is he will speak to us in our own language and we will feel his love and the love of the Creator, the love of God in our hearts like mankind has never felt in the history of humanity. I mean this is going to be an unbelievable event, buddy. Everybody. It will it will make a huge difference in the world. There's uh there's nobody listening right now who if you can make it for the next two two years at the most, maybe less. Or maybe a little short of that thereafter. We're not perfect. We can't set it exact the time because it, we have our free will and anything can change. But as soon, uh, there's no one here who isn't especially privileged to be here at this time to witness this great transformation until finally the entire world becomes our family. We've en we're going to end separation and we we'll understand that the divinity in the world cannot be divided and that we are really, literally, we are uh, pieces of that divinity ourselves and we will find a way to share. And that brings us to a point which has motivated you and I and inspired you and I and that we agreed that we wanted to share with everyone today. And that's a simple sentence that goes like this. We are human beings having, a, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spirits having a human experience. That awareness allows us to have a completely different view of each other and of the world. Yeah, if you get this uh, information in the Bible, it says, Be ye therefore perfect as your Father is perfect in heaven. You'll recognize that you're not going to do it in one quick hundred years. That's right. Buddy, we want people to hold that thought. 
uh, until we see them again, and I wanted to ask you, yeah. do you have an update on that teenager? We had talked, you had told me about a teenager in Massachusetts who was in a coma. Yes. And yet, when sick people came to see her, they were healed. Yes. What, what is the latest on Started that? with her family, and uh, of course, by the time people hear this, it could have changed, but the, uh, the, the way we're talking about it right now, the update is that that uh, they are now moving her out to the garage and fixing the garage up beautifully because so many people have discovered that the reality is just visiting this lovely teenager. They must, she must be surrounded with some kind of healing energy because when, every time they come there, somebody gets healings. Well, I hope everyone found that enlightening. I know I enjoyed it. I want to mention a couple of things before we get back into the video, and that is one of the practices a lot of us do who are interested in this material that we got from Benjamin Krem, one of the latest um, announcers of this, what is what we call the Ageless Wisdom Teaching. And I know you heard, buddy, and Dick mentioned some of the others, H.B. Blavatsky, Helena Roadrich, um, Alice A. Bailey, and then of course, our own Benjamin Krem. Well, Ben had, through the masters, uh, presented transmission meditation to the world for the first time in, I believe it was, the spring of 74. And now there is Transmission meditation groups all over the world. I've been doing it myself for the better part of 20 years. And it's a way to put the personality, the threefold man or woman on the dense physical plane. We say threefold because we mean mind, body, and emotions or astral body. And put that more in touch with the soul. The soul is sort of downloading its information into its vehicles here on the physical plane. And when that energy is downloaded, a person becomes more intelligent, more loving, more detached, less emotional, more creative, and as I mentioned, better able to express and share the love energy. Oh, and also healthier physically, mentally, emotionally, and this may be most important, speeds up your own personal evolution so that you can come to the point that the masters are at hopefully in fewer lifetimes and then you can go anywhere in the universe you want to go or else you can stick around as some of them have to help out their younger brothers and sisters like you and I. So it's a sort of stepping down of these great cosmic energies that the masters of wisdom are the scientific cus custodians of. And like a transformer, it steps down the energy coming in, the electricity coming in, you know, from the wires out there and the power lines coming into your house so that it doesn't blow out all the fuses. You're stepping down these energies or helping step down these energies when you do transmission meditation. And it goes to the rest of mankind as well as to the lower kingdoms, plant, animal, mineral. And it sort of, you could say poetically, adds to the pool of spiritual energy from which all of creation drinks. So you're helping all of humanity evolve when you do that. And since those energies I mentioned earlier from all those avatars, it's coming down through Maitreya and the masters and then to you and I, you're even helping on a more mundane level, you're helping countries negotiate that are at each other's throats. So it helps everywhere. And of course, as I said before, don't believe us, quote unquote, just look into it for yourself. And now to get back to the video, remember Buddy was talking about 
traveling the U.S. and seeing those crosses of light, those Aquarian crosses of light, mostly. And what does that mean? That's an even-armed cross, um, where the horizontal line is not longer than the uh, vertical line. They are um, the same. And you saw the pictures. They've been seen all over the country, probably all, and all over the world, I think, at this point. And then Ben mentioned Share International Magazine. I should have grabbed one so I could hold it up for you. I'll do that the next time. Um, and that's one of the places where he gets his information and we get ours too. Share International Magazine. I'll talk more about that at the end as well. And you can Google that. And um, then we saw the witnesses, some of which um, Buddy had met and Dick has met too, and other members of, of, the, of this group, including our own Francis Oman, who did a lot of these uh, films over the years. This particular one, um, there may be clips that are in this video that are hers, I'm not certain. And of course, so back to the healings. Healings uh, from pe for people who needed surgery, um, who may have had, you know, gallstones or cancer or HIV AIDS or ulcers or arthritis, a whole host of illnesses. And you saw the woman mentioned there, and I don't remember hearing this before. She said that when the people prayed, the crosses of light actually got brighter. I thought that was amazing. Well, there's a miracle right there. And then Dick was talking about the, the, the milk drinking statues. And people had tried to poo-poo that by saying, well, you know, the statue's porous, and so the milk was just absorbed by it. Well, for one thing, some of the statues were not porous. They were made of copper or, or other metals or of stone that wasn't particularly porous. And I'm not sure he mentioned it here, but they ran out of milk in India where this occurred because so many people were feeding milk to the statues. And statues can't possibly hold that much liquid. And But what does this mean? Well, it was a sign to Hindus that, as Dick put it, a great soul had descended, had re-entered the world. And Buddy mentioned that uh, because one of the statues um, that absorbed the milk, I think it might have been Ganesh, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, that this was, was a great sign to the downtrodden and the dispossessed disenfranchised and the poor because it was the deity of, what's the word I was thinking? Uh, prosperity. There you go. And remember too that these different deities that the Hindus have, they're all differing aspects of the same great deity. We Westerners need to remember that because some people think, oh, you know, they don't believe in one God. Actually, they do. And what else did they mention? The healing wells, yes. These um, springs all over the world. And how it was mentioned in Shared International Magazine in 1988. And they told about the Tilakote tablets. Um, actually, it didn't mention the tablets themselves, the Tilakote water. What happened was Benjamin Krem convinced a homeopathic pharmacy in London to make a remedy based on the water, which they did. And I've been taking it myself for... 20 years and it's made a tremendous difference in my health and that of many other people who I've introduced it to over the years. In fact, I just gave some to a woman in the building today before before this taping. <laughs> and um, they had mentioned Germany and India and Russia where to coin a phrase, desperate Russian housewives were dragging their alcoholic husbands because it seemed to be curing their alcoholism. So it helps people with substance abuse issues as well. And we're also, we're also told that, I don't think Dick or Buddy mentioned this, that eventually there'll be 777 healing well, wells worldwide. Say that f seven times fast. And Dick also mentioned the statues that move, that weep, that bleed, and how they have tested them. And some of them were actually oozing olive oil and blood. And they even knew what blood type it was when it was tested. 
And he mentioned the Madonna on the side of the bank in Florida. I believe that's still present after all these years. And Dick also mentioned how all of these signs, all of these miracles are connected. And they're a sign, a message from the masters, a spiritual hierarchy, that a great being is emerging. It's the emergence, the emergence of Maitreya. And uh, you remember how Buddy mentioned how he'd searched for years since he was a child for the answer uh, to hunger. And how we have 25,000 people dying every day on a planet with a 12% food surplus. No one should be going hungry. We have huge stores of it in the West piled up where they're waiting to, for, to get the right price for it. And meanwhile, people are starving for want of that food, which is being eaten by rodents, you know, who snuck into those storehouses. And what else? I'm looking at my notes here. He talked about how people believe in angels and divine protections, how this is quite widespread, and that he was drawn to this work as we all are, as you are too. That's probably why you're watching this. And um, Dick mentioned how the Masters of Wisdom are offering answers to our current crises. And he mentioned you know, the Cold War, apartheid, the Berlin Wall, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the stock market crash, and specifically about apartheid, how, the, how it ended long before anybody thought it would, and how Maitreya spoke personally to Maitreya, and um, how Mandela later became president, which nobody thought would happen at the time. And Buddy mentioned his trips behind the Iron Curtain. And um, also how the religious miracles are there as a sign to the religious. You have to speak to people in their own language. You or I may not be particularly religious, thinking of ourselves as more spiritual than, than belonging to a particular religion, but billions of people are, billions are members of religion, and you need to speak to them in their own language, which is what the masters did. So Dick pointed out how all of these miracles are a wake-up call from, for humanity. The problems we have, substance abuse, war, pollution, greed, um, lack of education, lack of health care and housing uh, for everyone, these are the things they're calling attention to. He mentioned Princess Di and how her funeral was sort of a dress rehearsal for the Day of Declaration. Maitreya spread his beneficent energies out across the crowd there and across the world on that day. And Buddy mentioned how just 1% of the world's military budget would educate everyone. Isn't that fascinating? And where this information is found, as we mentioned before, Share International Magazine, um, Alice Bailey's books, Blavatsky's, Helena Roadridge, and of course, Benjamin Krem and Share International, shareinternational.us. And I've got another address here I'll give you in a minute. And um, remember, too, how Dick mentioned starvation, which is Maitreya's top priority after the healing of the, of the environment. And I think that's just about everything they went over. The end of competition, the end of greed, how our greed will cause a stock market, stock market crash. That's hard to say, too, which will bring the world to its senses and bring the level playing field that Buddy mentioned. So... Um, this whole story, this whole message is showing that mankind is a family, one family, and we need to take care of one another because we are one family. And um, we're spirits, as Dick said, spirits having a human experience, not humans having a spiritual experience. And um, what else have we got here? I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, Thanks to our one of our producers, uh, I was reminded to mention planetarymakeover.org where you can find more information about the show. And you can find us on Facebook too, hashtag Planetary Makeover. And also, Share International, all one word this time, dash west.org. That's Share International hyphen or dash west, W-E-S-T dot O-R-G. Also, share-international.us and share-international.org. And I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for visiting us. 
and listening to the to the video and we'll have more for you next time in the meantime go in peace and hope for a better world that is on its way